Hey guys, George at Soundtracks here, and this week we're going to share the answer to our 30th anniversary trivia question for July. How do we set up the alternating flashing ditch lights on FX3 and FX4? So first off, let's go to the user's guide. Now when you go through the diesel user's guide, there's actually a full detailed rundown of exactly what needs to be done. So we're going to walk through the process and show you what we're actually doing. So first off, there's two aspects that we need to address. Number one is what's called function mapping, and the other is what's called the lighting effect or the hyperlight effect. Function mapping refers to controlling the lights on and off or the sound effects on and off with specific buttons. It allows us to determine the control of the light or the sound effect by which buttons on our throttle that we want to use. Now, by default, the FX3 lighting effect is activated by function 24, and the FX4 lighting effect is actually illuminated with button 25. So when we do this, we turn on function 24, you can see that one ditch light has illuminated. And when I turn on function 25, you can see that the other ditch light has illuminated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn these both off, and we're gonna map them both to function 24. So to do this, we go to our function mapping CVs. Now CV 1.259 determines which button turns on and off the FX3 lighting effect, and by default, it's button 24. So for the purpose of this exercise, we're gonna have both lights turned on with button 24. So CV 1.259 is set to a value of 24 already, so we don't need to do anything with that. But now FX4, which is controlled by button 25, does need to be changed so that it's also controlled with the button 24. Now when you're doing your function mapping, you can have more than one effect triggered by a single button. So if, in this case, we're gonna have two lighting outputs controlled with a single button. The caveat is you cannot control a lighting effect or a single sound effect with more than one button. So to do this, the FX4 lighting effect is controlled by CV 1.260. So the value of the CV corresponds to the button that controls it. So in this case, we're gonna take CV 1.260 and we're gonna set it also to a value of 24. So to do this, I'm gonna grab my throttle and on the main line, I'm gonna set CV 32 to a value of one. This is the one dot part of the CV. So now when I talk to CV260, the decoder looks at the value in CV32 to determine whether that's 1.260 or 2.260. But because 32 is set to one, we're setting that, which is the FX4 lighting output. So when I put in my value of 24, now you're gonna see that the FX4 lighting effect is now also controlled with the button 24. So when I turn on button 24, you can see that both ditch lights illuminate together. But this is only half the battle because now when I blow my horn, the lights are not alternating and flashing. So we need to set that up. And to do that, we're gonna set that up in the hyperlight CVs. And the hyperlight CVs for the FX3 and the FX4 are actually CV51 and 52. And in this case, we're gonna tell the decoder what lighting effects or hyperlight effects, we want those lighting outputs to display when they're illuminated. So first off, let's talk at CV51 for the FX3. So when we go to our chart, we see that a value of nine is the type one ditch light. So type one ditch light will stay on steady and will start to flash when the horn is blown. Type two ditch light stays off and then will start to flash when the horn is blown but we want type one, so we're gonna start with a value of nine. Now, as we work our way through the charts, we see that we want what's called grade crossing logic. And what that does is it tells the decoder to activate the flashing light effect when the horn is blown. So now we go nine plus 64, we're set to a value of 73. But the last thing we wanna do is we also want to add the 128 because these are LEDs. Now, LED compensation does not change the voltage, so you will still need to add your resistors, but what it does do is it does change how that lighting signal is sent so that your light appears more animated. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set CV51, which is my FX3 lighting effect, to a value of 201 or 201, which is nine plus 64 plus 128. And now I exit. So now we're gonna unmute. And now when I blow my horn, you're gonna notice that just the one ditch light is flashing. So now we need to set up the other side, which is the FX4 lighting effect. So all the other parameters are gonna stay the same. Type one ditch light, grade crossing logic, and LED. But here's where we're gonna tell the decoder this is different. We're gonna add the value of 32, and that determines phase offset. So by default, phase A is on, and that's the one we've set. But when we enable that phase offset, we enable phase B, which means when this light is on, this light's gonna be off. And then when this one turns off, the other one turns on. So you're gonna see that 180 degrees out of phase. So to do that, we're gonna add a value of 32 to our value of 201 that we've derived with the other parameters. We're gonna use that and we're gonna set a final value of 233. So now when I set CV52 to a value of 233, now when I unmute my locomotive, we blow the horn. You can see that now you're getting that alternating flashing ditch light. So that's how you set up the alternating flashing ditch lights. Now there are a couple other parameters that you can adjust. CV59 determines the flash rate. A higher number translates to a slower flash rate or a longer amount of time between flashes. The other side is you can set CV60, which is called the hold time. And that determines how long in seconds that the effect will last after you release the horn button. So guys, I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you. Be sure to check out our user's guide. We've got a lot of good explanations on how the decoder operates, ways to set up all of the features in the decoder so that that way you can get the most out of your Tsunami 2 decoders. And again, if you have any questions or get stuck, we're a phone call or an email at support at soundtracks.com away, and we are willing and able to help you.